so let's uh, let's talk about my belt setup. Uh, it's been updated uh, since my last video, and, and wanted to kind of go through it and and give you guys a uh, an understanding of what I've done, what I've changed, why I've changed it, or or if it stayed the same, why it stayed the same. So uh, first off, the the base portion of the belt, right? So the actual belt, and that is a blue Alpha Gear uh, outer belt. I wear the blue Alpha Gear inner belt almost every single day, if not every day, um, and and it is what has the soft side Velcro on the outside, which connects to the hard side Velcro or or the the hook version of the Velcro on uh, the actual inner portion of the outer belt. This is uh, this is the way I like to do things. Um, I mean, everybody has their own flavor on stuff and how they want to do it. But this is how I do it, and, and it works really, really well for me. Um, so with this, uh, let's let's go through the, the different parts of the belt, and then we can talk a little bit more in depth on them as we go. So first off, like I said, the, the base of the belt, Blue Alpha Gear. I, I still use them. I love them. They're good dudes. Uh, currently, they're doing some kind of um, creating masks for uh, to donate over to medical professionals that are in need of them uh, due to our times. Um, but it is pretty cool. Uh, they're good dudes. They're alumni. Um, they also have been good friends for a while. So those are the kind of things I look for in, uh, in people to buy products from or, or uh, coexist, if that makes sense, in this industry. So going along, uh, we'll start on holster side. All right, so this is my right side. And one of, the, one of the things people ask me all the time is like, hey, John, what's this pouch for? Now, um, back in the day, I didn't have anything like this. I didn't use uh, a pouch like this for what I use it now. It's just a Gerber like multi-tool, and sometimes I'll have a Sharpie uh, thrown in there a little bit so that I can I can have uh, the availability of, of a marker for the range, right? Because this is what I usually use this thing for. And it works really well. It is previously, it was a 203 pouch. Uh, from one of the the kits we had at my uh, at the range battalion that I was in and Our company had a bunch of them. They were tossing them because we were getting multicam ones and I was like I'll take it um, And I could use it for something else and I ended up finding a reason for it It's kind of tearing and I'm gonna need a, a new one very very soon um, But it is what it is. It's it's one of those kind of nice little uh, mementos from the army so uh, going along further in the belt side, let's, uh, this is where it kind of gets a little, a little uh, cray cray. So let's, let's start with how I attach the belt. And I use Safari Land, I'm sorry, how I attach the holster to the belt. And I use Safari Land's uh, QLS system, right? So the female end is on the belt and it's attached using their no ride or, or high ride, I can't remember which one they call it, um, attachment method. I don't like uh, huge drops. Um, it's my personal preference. Uh, you can you can do whatever you want, obviously, but I, I prefer to have my holster right there at my waist. It works really well for my body type. It works, so it's it's definitely something to play around with. But that's my preferred method. Um, the problem with a lot of these Safari Land uh, uh, drops or attachment points to belts. Are that they're made for two inch belts and I don't own a two inch belt I'm not a cop so I have to or I use zip ties to tighten it so I can close up that area so you can see I kind of just zip tie around and through the loop on the bottom end over the top on the top end it covers everything it stays on really well I can still cinch the belt out of it so if I need to remove this I can I can undo it by pulling it apart or, or I could cut the zip ties they're just zip ties so uh, you can you can kind of you can see that how how that works right there. Now with the holster side of things, I right, use a, the Safari Land uh, 6390 RDS for for most of my holster needs on the outside, and that's because I like active retention. Right, I like having active retention on my guns that I can use a nice little thumb release and uh, and and actually get access to my firearm that way. I don't like non-retaining uh, holsters for my my outside the waistband use. I find it to be kind of kind of negligent uh, for people to do that if it was work related or 
or otherwise. But because I teach law enforcement and some military units, uh, they tend to use holsters like this with retention, and that's what I use. Um, and I find no reason to have a regular one without retention because I'm just as fast with this. But that's a training thing, obviously, for most people. If you don't get enough reps, you're not going to do very well. Um, let me get my gun out of here so I can uh, kind of show you guys more. But right here I have the Nub Mod, which is an awesome modification. It's just a bolt-on piece that makes the ALS uh, button a little bigger. So that's kind of nice. And then let's go into the, the more meat and potatoes of, of this. Now, one of the things I do that a lot of people don't do is I don't mount my QLS fork, right, the, the male end where it's supposed to be mounted it's supposed to be mounted low down here you can kind of see the two holes here and the third one down here where my thumb is so that's where it's supposed to be mounted and that's probably one of the reasons why this works really well for me is because i don't mount it there i mount it where that little shield is supposed to be for the little thumb uh for the thumb activation or thumb release so i mount it in those holes and yes i don't have a third screw in there uh okay um <laughs> and i have the two that that matter which keeps me from needing any kind of canting issue or canting plates like the one that's behind it to keep it straight so right now it's mounted straight to the holster and it works really really well this way it has been working for me for a really long time uh i highly uh, i would say suggest it for you to try it may help you get the gun a little bit lower and use a normal belt uh, mounting height and then you don't have to use a drop or this also alleviates the need for a leg strap um, and that's why I don't use a leg strap I don't need to so something like that then we have the theory police uh, and the the it's like a negative cant uh, piece of equipment or I guess I, I don't know what it's exactly called it's like a negative cant uh, plate or something like that but the negative cant plate I just got recently and I really really like it because all I wanted it for was to mount my tourniquet holder out on the front end and and alleviate some space on my belt so what it does is uh, what I did was I just mounted it with the two holes there I left the third one just loosey-goosey you can kind of see it here but what it's supposed to do is mount down here so that you can get the cant away from there and everything mounts a little bit lower so it works really well. It takes away that negative cant so you don't have to do what I'm doing. But because I like the way that I have it and it works really well for me, I just mounted it behind this and am just using it as a bracket to hold my 1110 uh, tourniquet holder for my Cat 7. And and that's the way I'm using it now. It's, it's actually really, really functional. Although oddball and, and not the intended use of all this equipment, um, that's the way I'm using it and it's been working. So I'm going to keep going until for some reason or a reason gives, or I'm given a, a reason that it doesn't work anymore. So, uh, weird setup, but just, it is the, the way that it's been working for me really well. So that is my, my holster for my blaster. Um, let's continue on, right? So further on in the belt, uh, I have this little PTT retainer that I've had for a while I have a few of them laying around and uh, and all I use it to do is hold a chem light. So I'll use a, uh, or put a chem light through it for low light or no light courses so that I can identify myself or have some kind of identifier light wise, which you should have in a low light course or low light practice, uh, some kind of visible identifier so people could tell that you're down range. Even if you're not paying attention, you're not focused up top, at least it's in your back so you can tell. Now, not, not a necessary piece of equipment, really. Like, you can slice it through or you can put it through the, the loops. But I used it out of curiosity one, one weekend and it worked really well. And there's no reason to re remove it, so I just left it. Going on uh, through, um, I have my TPG medical uh, pouch. It has a very bare minimum med but it's a really sweet med pouch where I can pull it from this end or I can pull it from this end and it comes out as a little a little uh kind of enclosed uh pocket or or I guess placard or whatever you want to call it it's it's a nice little setup it's got a mini set of shears some combat gauze a chest seal that's folded up in there it's it's a good setup and uh and personally I really really like it so um the downside to this guys is that 
this company is out of business, so they don't they no longer make these. Um, sorry, but I still can't find one that I like better, so I continuously use this one. Uh, moving through, uh, going down the line, I have a, a little bit of a snap link or my carabiner. Um, it's an old one that I don't use for like climbing stuff, um, but I have a reason for it, and it's just to hold my gloves. It comes in handy for holding uh, like my gas mask if I go D-ring it onto my gas or D-ring my gas mask onto my belt. Uh, that way I don't have to strap it on my leg or anything. I don't like things strapped around my leg, by the way. Um, I, I don't like being hugged by a weak child. So um, it, it's just a weird uh, thing that I guess I deal with. But I go ahead and I, I snap link my, my gas mask pouch onto this with one of the D-rings on the gas mask pouch. And it works out great. Uh, going a little further, right? Um, we have... Uh, a set of pouches and these pouches are from uh, defense mechanisms they make a really nice pouch I like them a lot the way they attach is more belt oriented than they are molly oriented but this is also hard side velcro so I don't get those sections excuse me sections on my belt that don't have connection to my inner belt all of these are being connected to my inner belt which is great so that's a an added bonus now, the AR pouch is pretty nice. It's nice and slick. It fits my phone too, but it won't fit any bigger mags. So 308 mags aren't gonna fit in this pouch. Uh, it's not what it's for, but definitely a great AR pouch. It holds, retains it. It has some elastic to it, so it acts kind of like a burrito. Um, but it's, uh, it's one of those pouches that I, I really like how slick it is, right? There's no extra bullshit on top. There's no like things to scratch yourself on or, or get hung up on other things. They're really smooth, really slick. I'm really digging their pouches. Now, I kind of did a little bit of a modification, not to the pouch, but to my Blue Force Gear dump pouch. Now, if you guys can't tell, right, uh, this is another one of John's crazy mods uh, to make his life easier. And what I did was, uh, if you've ever seen the Blue Force Gear little dump pouches, they have an elastic outer portion to this uh, whatever material, this waterproof material that they have that is the main part of the pouch. So they have their little Velcro strips that usually attach to your belt, and they have this backing which folds up into an elastic pouch that's usually right here. Well, I cut the elastic off, right? So I cut the, the pouch off and I left the actual pouch still sewn on to the bottom portion. And what I did was I cut four slits into it, right? The top and bottom, and I measured it to this before I cut it obviously, so I could put the defense mechanisms straps or their attachment points through those cut holes and keep my dump pouch and my mag pouch taking up the same amount of space. So weird modification, definitely something to think about if you're going to do it because it's a permanent modification to the dump pouch, not to the mag pouch. Um, but what's, uh, what sucks is now I can't, I can't stow this pouch. So I went ahead and figured out a way of stowing it. And all I do is I go ahead and wrap it up right nice and easy and I'll go ahead and use this this weird retainer and loop it across and attach it to itself and now I can kind of stow the dump pouch a little bit and gives me a stowed dump pouch per se not as good as as the previous way it was stowed but now it saves me a lot of real estate on my belt and I have my dump pouch readily available at a good angle and it's not behind me or any of the bullshit because I you notice how I like to keep my the rear of my belt slick uh, because I like being able to sit down and be comfortable I don't like sitting and being super uncomfy um, so moving along we have uh, the two mag pouches that are also defense mechanisms uh, once again I like having individual mag pouches on on a regular basis right one uh, like a single and a single but these ended up being really good they made a really thin material so they still bend with your body so it's not a hard piece of two mags right there they they act individually really nice so i'm okay with a double mag pouch like this um but usually i like singles 
but no big deal these work really really well i'm very happy with them they retain all my mags um they fit all my glock mags my sig mags my mmp mags and my sti mags so i have no problem with using any of those in all these uh pouches at the moment and then lastly i have this little tiny uh, uh beaner here and that's usually meant for my chem lights or it could be like a quick spot for my keys or for anything else that I want to just stick on there, uh, I have space for them and, uh, and I don't have to worry too much about how far back I'm going or whatever. Um, but I do have this big beaner back here that I usually stash most things on. So guys, that's, that's my updated belt for, I guess uh, you can call it my update for 2020. Um, and it gives you kind of an idea of what I'm working with uh, belt wise some of the weird modifications that I've done to certain things um, To get them to work the way I want them to work and that's the kind of weirdo that I am I'll go ahead and modify shit all the time backpacks bags Pouches like anything I can to go ahead and get the best uh, Outcome that I can for what I'm trying to do so hope this helps you guys understand a little bit more about how uh, my crazy brain works and also in ideas hopefully to help you set up your belt a little bit better and a little bit more uh, efficiently for what you're going to do with it. Take care.